Okay, in this video, let's talk about the length of an arc and also the area of a sector of a circle. And let's see the arc length first. Well, we know the circumference means that if you just pick a point on the circle and go around one time, the whole length is given by 2 pi r. r is the radius. And for the r length, you just don't go all the way. Maybe you start it from here and then you end it here. This right here is an arc. And if you want to find out the length of this arc, you need to know the radius of the circle and also the angle from here to here, that how much you turn. And this is how we are going to do it. You see that the arc is pretty much just a portion of the circumference. And if you know the ratio of that portion, that's pretty much it. So let me just write it down for you guys. And usually people write it to us for the arc length. Well, well, I need to know the whole thing first. So let me put that down. We have that 2 pi r. But this is the whole thing. This right here is just a small portion. And now the portion is going to be here is the angle. Well, the whole circle has 360 degrees if you use degrees. So the ratio is the following. One way you can do it is look at how big this angle is in degrees. So let's say we have theta degrees. And then we divide it by 360 degrees. So you have to multiply by this factor. Then in that case, you can get the length of this arc. For a quick example, imagine this is 30 degrees. Well, 30 divided by 360 is 1 over 12. That means this piece is only 1 over 12 of the whole circumference. So this is when you have in degrees. Plug in and then divide, you have that small portion of the whole circumference. And that's the arc length. And of course, we are all adults now, so we'll talk about how to do this with radians. So this is equal to, I will still have to put down 2 pi r for the whole thing. But if you have the angle theta in radians, you can just put down theta, and the whole thing is going to be 2 pi. That's the equivalent to 360 degrees. So you divide it by 2 pi. And this is when you have radians. And once again, this was in degrees. And here's the deal. When you use radians, this is so nice because 2, 2, pi, pi, they all cancel. So perhaps this is prettier because you end up with just r times theta for the r length. And this is the one that we'll be using a lot. And now let's see how to find the area of a sector. So suppose you have this sector. And the sector is just like a slice of a pizza from the whole pizza. As we all know, the area of the whole circle is just pi r squared. Area of a sector is just a small portion of the whole circle. So it's pretty much the same thing. I want to find out the area right here for that sector. I will put down a with a little s for the area of the sector. To do so, I will still have to know the whole thing. So I will have to put down pi r squared. No problem on that. And then I will look at how big this angle is. If you use degrees, that's OK. Just put on theta degrees and then divide it by 360 degrees. So this is how you can figure out what portion is this compared to the whole circle. So this is for degrees. And then if you want to use radians, which if you are an adult, then you do the following. You can just put down pi r squared. And for the theta, you just put on radians divided by, for the 360, you put on 2 pi, like that. And this is for radians. Now, from here, you see that the pi and pi cancel, and you pretty much just have the following. So, a s is equal to, we have a factor of 1 half. So let's put that down. We have the 1 half. And then we have the r square, and then we have the angle theta, like that. So this is the formula for the area of the sector when you have theta in radians. Likewise, if you have this right here, theta has to be in radians. So that's pretty much it, right? And let me know if you guys have any questions. And that's it.